gotta tell you folks, my favorite thing about being a dog, come on, say it with me, licking yourself. <laughs> Isn't that great? I tell ya, you're in big public, you're at a party, you're in the park, you go crazy with it. Everyone says, oh, he must have an itch. <laughs> I haven't had an itch since 1963. <laughs> So now, while everyone uh, is enjoying their refreshments, I would like for you to give a big uh, dog pound welcome to a uh, fine young comedian, a uh, pooch you'll want to smooch, uh, Mr. Jerry, Mr. Jerry Mutt. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Hey, who let you out of right, the yeah. Down, boy. Heel. Heel. <laughs> uh, guy was uh, hot today, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my master, he's such a moron. Yeah, he goes to the grocery store yesterday in this hot weather, and he decides to bring me along. Yeah, but does he take me inside where it's nice and cool? No, he leaves me in the car. Yeah, and what does he do to relieve my suffering in this 100-degree weather? He rolled down the window! Huh? Yeah, th yeah, that's right. He leaves a crack in the window. Now, what is that? A crack? I mean, what, am I supposed to be grateful? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, nothing ticks me off, no pun intended, ticks me off worse than, than him leaving that crack in the window while he waltzes off into the store. And I'm burning up in there for at least 20 minutes. You know, when the bag boy... He's loading up the groceries. I ought to tell him, you know he eats the grapes, don't you? Eats the grapes. <clears throat> a little snacking there while he's, while he's shopping. <laughs> yeah, and of course, after a trip like that, I'm ready to have the boys over and pop the top on a cool one. Oh, no, no. Not a beer, the commode. <clears throat> Uh, oh, any, uh, any cats here tonight? Oh, good. Yeah, my master has a cat. I mean, he calls her precious. No, but he thinks this cat's like the greatest thing because she uses the bathroom in a box. I mean, you know, what's so special about that? I could take a dump in a box. But really, where is the adventure in that? I mean, I mean, when I'm ready to lay some cable, I like to keep my options open. No, he doesn't appreciate it, though. He thinks I'm a nasty animal, but... I don't know, I, uh, I consider myself to be more of a... of an artist. Yeah, a, a, a sculptor, if you will. Yeah, I did, uh, I did Stonehenge in the kitchen the other night. I'm really good at, uh, making bunny rabbits. You know, I have to have something to keep me occupied. I've got a couple of squeaky toys, a few old socks, and, and of course, the old rawhide chew toy. Now, who is the Einstein who came up with that one? Yeah, my master comes home one day with a big old economy-sized bag of beef-basted rawhide chew toys. Now, at first you think, boy, these things are great. And then you work half an hour to rip off your first bite, and then you start to chew. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Finally, I just end up sucking on it. You know, just suck all the beef junk out of it until it's just a hunk of wet dough. Yeah, and then I stash them under the couch. Right there with my private sculpture collection. Thanks a lot. You've been a great audience. Thank you. is what I call comedy. You know, he is, he is very talented.
Which story would you like to hear? Hmm. Tell us about the stars. Where do they come from? Oh. You want to know about the stars, do you? Yeah. <laughs> long, long ago, when the land was still dreaming, there lived a young man from the Ririjingu tribe named Wanjuk. What Wanjuk wanted more than anything was to sing. The problem was he couldn't. His voice sounded like uh, the scratching of a fiddler crab on a coconut tree. So one day, at the beginning of the dry season, Wanjuk started walking, looking for his voice. He walked and walked until night came. He ate some berries he had packed in his dilly bag, lay down under a gum tree and went to sleep. Wanjuk set off walking again. He walked still farther until he came upon his clan totem, an emu. One day, Wanjuk saw a turtle sunning herself in a billabong. He sat and waited. And waited. And waited some more. After a long, long wait, he realized that turtles do not sing. So, Wanjuk started walking again. He met many animals. <coughs> and even a croc. No Cassie? Oh yes, and one cassowary. <coughs> one juke tried to sing along with all the animals. Each time, he reached for the sounds inside himself, but there weren't any. It was the beginning of the rainy season, and the east wind came blowing. The east wind was so powerful, it stole Wanjup's whistle away. Wanjup was sad. He did not know what to do or where to go. He was lost. He decided to give up his dream of singing. It was a spiny anteater feeding on white ants that had hollowed out a gum tree branch. Wanju saw the anteater stick his tongue in one end of the log and heard his grunts come out much louder from the other. Wanju picked up the branch and blew the white ants right out of the tube. It made music. Wanju sat and played, and played, and played. Soon, all the animals he'd met in his walking were singing through his music. It was the beginning of the dry season again, and Wanjuk had become a good player. It was time to go back. Happy to have him back, the tribe threw a welcoming corroboree for him. They prepared his favourite tucker and sang his favourite song. 
And when they asked Wanjuk about his walking, this is how he replied. The tribe had never heard such a sound. They loved his music so much, they asked him to play every night. They were happy to have him back. But the happiest of all was Wanjuk, as he had finally found his voice. But Grandfather, what about the stars? Ah, uh, 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 the stars. Remember when Wanjuk blew the white ants out of the log? He blew so hard that the ants scattered all over the sky, where you can still see them now.
Thank <laughs> you. 